Hi and welcome to episode 216 of A Year of Living Sincerely. I just got back from the SCAR Project Houston exhibit and um, I'm not going to make this a long introduction but uh, we had a gallery tour with uh, SCAR Project photographer David J and a couple of the SCAR Project models and so I thought you might like to see some of that. So without further ado, here that is. I pulled out one that I really thought was good. It was just a very honest, raw image of her. I said, why don't you come look at this? And I was kind of playing with the picture, and she's standing over my shoulder, and I turned around, and she just had tears streaming down her face. And uh, I guess it was really the first time that she had come to face-to-face -to -face with who she is now, or what she looks like. And I think it's quite a shock. It's, it's different than looking in a mirror, which is reversed and we're so used to looking at that image and suddenly being confronted with the reality of a, a very clear, honest photograph just really kind of knocked her down a little bit and I said, now, we ran over the wind, grabbed her once again as I do, over to the window and just three quick shots and uh, Sarah the Crown girl. This is uh, Sylvia Sue and uh, she came to New York from Canada. Maybe you can just uh, Tell them a little bit about what's transpired in your life. This is back in 2009 when I was 25, and um, I just I was I had a reoccurrence, a local reoccurrence, in just the, this last May. So this time, funny enough, um, I was wearing a wig, so it's completely bald. This is my actual hair. So <laughs> it's quite ironic that it's exactly the same, but yeah. Um, so that time I had. Um, chemo, um, probably the most aggressive chemo that they could give me for a young woman, and then it was a rare occurrence, as I said, and then um, after that, you know, I was just kind of getting on with my life and trying to decide where, like, cancer had its place in my life and whatnot, but as those of you who know or have been touched by cancer, it's not just something that happens and then you erase it and you forget about it. Like, it's this ongoing thing that you deal with, so like even until up to this year, I was dealing with like reconstruction surgeries and stuff like that, so this reoccurrence came as like a complete surprise to me, so um, yes, so I had surgery again in, I um, can't remember when, June maybe, and then I had, um, they said chemo probably wasn't an option for me just because they already gave me the most aggressive treatment, they gave me the option of radiation and estrogen because my tumor was estrogen receptive, they wanted to shut down all the estrogen in my body, which I declined. So I'm like, you know, I, I've done enough with my body and I just don't think it's fair for me, like at that point, not even being 30, to do that to my body. So I declined that treatment and I just finished radiation end of mid-September. And that was, that was the deal in itself, it was okay. And then I ended up with second degree radiation burns. So open wounds and stuff like that, so it's quite painful. But um, yeah, it's been quite a process. You know, the second diagnosis really different than my first, and uh, definitely look at it different, and really look at like living in the present. And you know, there's a lot of cliches about like oh, live in the moment and live in the present, but it really becomes a reality, like especially the second time around, just having to deal with it again. Um, the photograph is one of the few where um, the woman is actually. I was actually glad that I was smiling in the photograph because we were laughing a lot during my yeah. shoot. And if you if you saw the if you see the documentary tomorrow or if you buy a, a DVD, then you'll kind of understand like what kind of transpired in that. And <laughs> I liked it just because that kind of represented who I was. This was actually when that person actually uh, she's probably about 18 here. She was actually only 25 when she passed away in that picture. I know she looked a lot older, but it really, it's such an awful disease and it really destroyed her. That's all I can say. It really just changed her, you know, you know just completely physically and, you know, and mentally. It was really, really rough. And that was her boyfriend at the time. Before all this started, they actually looked very similar. She was, uh, Jolene was kind of tall and skinny with long red hair. And uh, they were, if you saw them together, you'd be like, you know what a beautiful couple. And, uh, you know, the chemo and the surgeries just really took a toll on her, and uh, as they do, and often people look at the picture and go, who's that woman with that, with that young man? And it's like, it's 
it's actually her boyfriend, and you know, they're kind of the same age. And she's very young. She's one of my, my favorite people in, in the whole world. She's a, she actually has a cerebral palsy, and she's a devout, devout Catholic. And she's actually in the process of becoming a consecrated virgin as we speak. And she had never, she basically, she said to me, no man has ever seen me naked, and certainly not taken a picture. So this is a massive moment for her, as you can well imagine. And uh, we're the, uh, the meeting of uh, God, art, and religion, and, and modesty, and her recently deceased parents all came together in a moment in her living room in New Jersey. And she was terrified, you know, of the whole process to start. And then she just, it was just this nervous laughter that just started, and then we just had started having so much fun. She was just bursting into laughter, and I was like, oh my gosh, I have to get that, because that's so, what's hidden underneath all of this, this bottled up person in this wheelchair who could hardly move. And uh, yeah, that, we ended up with that picture, and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so her. And she loves it, knowing that she's a part of this. has just completely changed her life. I think it's uh, it just gave her a presence in the world, and this really honest presence that I think she had never found anywhere else. And she found, uh, I don't know, she's found something in the Star Project family. Tony actually is a Texas uh, native. She was here just the other night. She got this at a really young age. They did obviously very aggressive treatment. I think really nothing was working for her. She was treated at the Anderson, and they did this one of these uh, stem cell things. It's basically completely saved her life. Tony's one of the first women I shot, so it's probably seven years ago. She, um, 30 or so, 31, like that. And she's doing really, really well. I think so the stem cell thing has just been like magic for her. Behind her is Eliza. She's one of the most recent girls. She's obviously just a, a young woman. She's about to get married. That kind of struck her down really, really young. And this is the first time that I just had that picture printed up a few weeks ago. So it's the first time it's ever been up. And I really, I like it really. Uh, she has that. She's crazy young to be like that. It's innocent. Right? So as I've, as I've mentioned, all the most of the women thankfully get better. Very certain and definite percentage don't and continue to, uh, you know, the disease just continues no matter what type of treatment they do. Um, lovely Vanessa here. I shot her. Vanessa is one of the absolute first people I shot. She's like my love. And uh, this was actually the first picture I took of Vanessa. We shot this in New York. Uh, Probably seven years ago now, I would say. And uh, she had had a, just a single mastectomy then. Mm -hmm. And then things took a little bit of a turn for the worse. And at the airing of, uh, she ended up having a, another mastectomy. And a bit of reconstruction, that's where they were. We actually shot this at the premiere, in the hotel at the premiere of the, uh, or the viewing of Bearing It All. In, uh, in Toronto, in Toronto, uh, about two years ago. Now, uh, things have gotten, if that's possible, even worse. And Vanessa's cancer has continued and invaded other parts of her body, unfortunately. And um, not quite sure what to say at that juncture. But maybe is there anything you'd like to say? I don't know. I love it. He takes care of me all the time. Billy, you want to say a few words about him? You're always good at this. Oh, uh, she's currently in hospice. That's the latest update with her. Mm -hmm. She has been in hospice for over a year. Uh, she was given six months to live in June of 2012. And uh, she fights hard. And even now, she's still fighting. Uh, when we get back from Houston, she goes to the doctor and get a radiation injection. Uh, that'll help attack the meds in her bones, which will hopefully help. And, uh, she currently has cancer in her 
brain and our liver and our adrenal gland and most of our bones. So it's a tough journey. And when we took that picture, we thought that'd be it. And uh, after she got her second surgery and reconstruction, we actually went back and thought a good title for that picture would be the end. Just two pictures. But oh no, but oh no, yes. yes. Uh, we came to Toronto and uh, had to take another one because her story is fortunately not finished. She's doing the best she can and she's uh, living sincerely with her mom though. Do you have your picture of Vanessa? help her live her life to your the fullest and she tries to spread the message for people. If anybody has any questions, can I ask them. I know Vanessa and Bob, what can you do about the Listen Scary Project? Thank you. 